All right, good evening. The Jackson Public School Board meeting is now called to order. All board members are present, so therefore we have a quorum. Board members, we've had the opportunity to review the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Is there Was there a second? This Ed second. Okay, thank you. Um, Dr. Luckett has moved and Dr. Seebeck has seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the agenda is approved. Next on the agenda is approving of the minutes. Board members, we've had an opportunity to review the minutes in advance. Is there a motion to approve the minutes for May 5th, 2020? So moved. Is there a second? At <laughs> Mr. Figgins. Is that second? <laughs> okay. Um, Dr. Luckett has moved and Dr. Seebeck has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any nays? There being none, um, the motion is approved. And that seems rather quick, but we have already made it to the superintendent's report. Dr. Green. Thank you, uh, uh, President Johnson, board members, uh, to all of those who are listening in to our, our uh, virtual board meeting. Uh, we'll begin as we typically do with the video announcement um, of uh, highlights from the past week or so. Um, and I'll just remind those who are on the call, if you would please mute your line. Uh, that'll help us not to have the feedback. So if you are on the call, please mute your line until you're speaking. Thank you. JPS pre-kindergarten enrollment is underway. Please visit our website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us to complete the pre-K enrollment application online and to upload and make a copy of the following documents. A valid governmental ID, long form birth certificate, updated immunization record or 121 form, and two current proofs of residency. After completing the application, take all forms and documents to the Poindexter Administrative Complex at 1017 Robinson Street. Those with a shared residency at the David will complete registration at Poindexter. Online registration for returning students is underway through the district's active parent portal. To complete registration, the enrolling parent or legal guardian must provide two proofs of residency showing their name and current physical address. P.O. boxes may not be used, and utility bills used for this purpose must be within the last 30 days. For more information about registration details, visit our website and click on the school registration link. JPS will serve grab-and-go breakfast and lunch meals during school closures through Wednesday, May 20th. Meals will be served from 9 to 11 a.m. on Monday and Wednesdays each week. Children 18 years of age and under will be able to pick up breakfast and lunch at no cost, and no ID is required. Adult meals are $2.50 for breakfast and $3.75 for lunch. Continuing effort to ensure that all scholars have access to at-home learning, instructional packets will be available at your child's school from 4 to 6 p.m. through Wednesday, May 6. Students in grades K through 11 should return those packets on Monday, May 18th through Wednesday, May 20th. Drop-off hours are from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. each day. In order to ensure timely grading, JPS high school seniors should return instructional packets and written assignments to their schools through Wednesday, May 6. Drop-off hours are from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. 
please follow the directions posted outside of each school. For more information about pickup and drop off dates, please visit our website. The Jackson Public Schools Board of Trustees recently approved the suspension of policies related to grading, promotion, retention, and graduation in response to the COVID-19 crisis. Please visit our website to read more about these important proposed changes. Each year, the Jackson Free Press, a free for-profit community magazine, honors teenagers from the Jackson metro area who have demonstrated remarkable talent, character, and community service throughout their high school careers. This year, five of the amazing honorees are JPS scholars. They are Sky McKee, a sophomore at Wingfield High School, Amari Quick Collins, a sophomore at Jim Hill High School, Courtney Sutton, a senior at Forest Hill High School, Kelvin Gardner, a senior at Provine High School, Shakira Bolton, a junior at Lanier High School. Sky McKee works as a volunteer to help keep her community clean. She works with the Rotary Club to assemble food packages for the needy, and she plans to attend Spelman College in Atlanta. Amari Quick Collins is a starting point guard for Jim Hill High School's basketball team. Amari plans to pursue a degree in medicine. Courtney Sutton volunteers at the Cottage Grove Nursing Home and its summer feeding program. As an honor student in the top five of her class, she plans to major in elementary education. Kelvin Gardner studies photodynamic cancer therapy at Millsaps College. He became interested in the field as a child after loved ones were affected by the disease. Kelvin plans to major in biomedical engineering. Shakira Bolton is a member of the National Honor Society. She volunteers to feed local children in need and works to provide free prom dresses to students who cannot afford their own. She plans to major in business administration and the performing arts. The Michael D. Johnson Memorial Foundation is accepting applications for the Michael D. Johnson Athletic Memorial Scholarship. The deadline to apply has been extended to Friday, May 15th. The foundation will present the award to the scholarship winner on Saturday, June 6. Candidates for consideration for the Michael D. Johnson Athletic Memorial Scholarship must be a graduating senior in the Jackson Public School District, be a member of a school-sponsored varsity athletic program, have an overall 2.5 or higher GPA, and be a Metro Jackson resident. For more information about how to apply, please visit our website and visit the MDJ Scholarship webpage. You may also contact the Michael D. Johnson Foundation at 769-208-6601. Rena Moore, an arts educator at the Academic and Performing Arts Complex Program at Jackson Public Schools, is one of eight recipients of the Arts Institute's 2020 AIM Awards. The Arts Institute of Mississippi, or AIM, at the University of Southern Mississippi honors high school level arts teachers that have made an impact through exemplary achievements in arts education throughout the state of Mississippi. The recipients of the 2020 AIM Awards are high school teachers in the arts disciplines, including creative writing, dance, music, theater, and visual art. Moore serves as the director for the Secondary Educators Division of the Mississippi Arts Educators Association. Congratulations, Ms. Rena Moore. For more information about Jackson Public Schools, please visit our website, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and stay connected about the district's coronavirus response. You can visit jackson.k12.ms.us forward slash coronavirus response. And as always, we want to, as always, we want to thank our instructional television production team um, for their hard work in um, providing excellence in communication uh, to our scholars and our parents and community members um, during these challenging times. This past Friday, as some of you know, um, it was the national recognition of school principals. We're so blessed to have uh, such talented and committed school leaders uh, working with us here in, in Jackson Public Schools. And so we celebrate them. Um, uh, we celebrated them this past Friday and we celebrate them um, as we continue on in our service to our young people and their families. 
This week, however, is a very special week here in JPS. It's officially National Teacher Appreciation Week. And each year during the first week of May, the nation celebrates teachers across the country. And you may have seen some of this already on some of the social media and other platforms. Please join uh, JPS as we celebrate our wonderful, amazing teachers. Today, May 5th, is National Teacher Day, and I want to thank our JPS educators. With this sudden end to our normal school year, our JPS uh, educators have continued to offer guidance and instruction uh, through virtual classrooms and learning at home lessons uh, to our scholars and supporting their families. So thank you to all of our teachers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, on behalf of uh, our leadership team, our district and our scholars. I also want to thank, um, send a special thank you to our newest teachers. And that would be our JPS parents. Uh, for all of those who are uh, newly minted classroom teachers, serving as our mathematics, reading, science, teachers, writing teachers, you name it. Um, we know that you, as a, a kind of on a flip of a dime, you, you've had to uh, join us in maintaining uh, instructional uh, programs to our young people, as well as maintaining many of you uh, full-time jobs uh, and juggling them. And so uh, I've already heard from several parents that they have a newfound respect for our classroom teachers. So uh, while we're celebrating our, our uh, classroom teachers for all that they've done and continue to do to serve our young people and families, we also want to give an honorable mention and shout out to our parents who are now serving um, uh, as well in locked arms with our teachers as teachers for their young people. Board members, as we typically do, um, uh, each month, we want to take a little bit of time to provide uh, updates regarding our bond program. So at this time, I want to welcome our Executive Director of Facilities and Operations, Mr. Don uh, McCracken, uh, who will join us and share some of those uh, bond updates. Mr. McCracken. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Green. Um, Ms. Johnson, board members, and Dr. Green, I'm more than happy and it is my pleasure to provide you with an update as to where we are. We're really excited about uh, what's going on, although COVID-19 has put a little damper on all of our spirits, but we're moving forward with the projects that are going on uh, and they seem to be going quite well. Uh, contractors are performing quite well and we're moving forward. Uh, with the very first uh, page here, you see that we have uh, phase one and phase three uh, professionals, and we've done the interview process, we've done the vetting, and we received 11 uh, submittals, and we have nine firms that we would like to uh, present to you. We have interviewed nine. Uh, we did the shortlist, and nine were a part of the shortlist. And out of that nine, we have two women business-owned enterprises, and we have four minority business enterprises, and the balance three are non-minority enterprises. Uh, it is our hope on May 19th that we can present all of these uh, professionals to you with the projects that uh, we assigned to those uh, individuals and the schools that are associated with those projects. Uh, we're requesting that we can present that information uh, as information and action item so that we can certainly expedite uh, the design uh, services for those professionals. Uh, this page, as always, we just use as a, a point of reference, if you will, uh, for lane conditions as well as industry market changes and et cetera. So uh, that is just a point of reference or what one may deem a disclaimer. Next page. Uh, since March of well, last month, we've um, advertised and we've uh, actually had bids for nine, nine projects. And nine of these projects were successful. Uh, we actually have two that we would like to present to you uh, this evening uh, for approval so that we can move those projects forward. 
And those two are Callaway High School, and this is with the uh, school roof, HVAC, and gymnasium and renovation. And the next one is Murrah High School, and that is the walkway or the entrance walkway facade upgrade. And the balance of those will be coming to you on uh, May 19th. And as I hope that we can uh, award those contracts so that those can get started uh, ASAP. Next slide shows the successful bids, the dates of the bids, and then also pending board approval, and the dates that we would like to bring them to uh, the board. Next slide. Continuation of the bids that um, were successful. The last one was uh, the Callaway High School packet. That's the exterior and interior lighting. Next slide. And these are some samples of projects that are actually under construction. We want to show some activity. Uh, this is at Chastain Middle School, and this is with the portico and walkway repairs. Uh, we showed you a, a month ago or two months ago uh, how poor uh, the condition uh, that that space was. And we're in the process of now uh, doing the demolition to, pre to prepare for correction as well as improving that location. And it would also allow uh, the exits uh, to the exterior to, be, to, be, uh, to move smoothly without any disruptions. Next slide. This is at Forest Hill High School Gymnasium. Uh, there are a series of projects that were bid uh, for uh, Forest Hill. Uh, this is the last one. This is fairly the largest one that impacts the interior the floors, the walls, the seatings, the exterior skin, uh, electrical upgrades, the whole nine yards, as well as restroom improvements. And these are some activities that are going on uh, to your right. It just shows where a primary line is coming in and they're uh, sending it and directing it through a uh, uh, underlying cable, if you will, uh, to connect to the building. Uh, and this is one of the activities that's going on. Uh, to your lower left, uh, this is the, um, the uh, louvers that are being replaced and improved. Uh, the, the, the item to your right is the interior of the uh, gymnasium. The roof has been painted. Uh, they're now doing uh, seating welding. Uh, so work is going on at that particular school. Next slide. <clears throat> we showed to you once before Wilkins uh, parking lot, uh, the condition of the parking lot, and also how it was under construction. Now this project parking lot has been completed. Uh, the buses now can load uh, safely. The students can exit and uh, um, arrive as, on, and exit uh, the bus staging area uh, with safety. Um, this also is the last item that's associated with MDE. And now we can request uh, MDE to come out to uh, sign this particular item off so that we can uh, clear that school. Next item. These are just samples of exterior lighting that our staff is doing, which is saving a tremendous amount of money uh, the, our staff has gone out on a daily basis to improve these various locations, and they will continue to do this throughout the course of the year. But as you see, the exterior light is at the student parking lot at uh, Wingfield, also at Van Winkle. They're actually out there, they were out there this morning uh, doing wall mounted uh, fixtures at uh, Van Winkle. Next slide. Uh, and this is the last slide. This is uh, work that has been done or un uh, was, has been completed at um, Jim Hill. Uh, this work will continue to, to be um, under construction. We will be doing some wall packets uh, that will include uh, improving the lighting conditions uh, at that location. Still a lot of work to be done uh, as a part of the projects that have bid. Jim Hill is one of them, and this will include the interior restroom renovations. And that's where we will bring those project uh, renovations or uh, recommendations to the board on May 19th. Next slide. 
as always, uh, information can be retrieved or reviewed, as well as individuals can go to see what projects are scheduled for bid or advertised on our website for those that wish to, uh, that are interested in construction work or just perusing our site uh, for bond activities. And with that, uh, that concludes my presentation. Uh, you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. I would like to make one comment. I would just like to thank Mr. McCracken for his leadership. And um, to the board members, we're excited about the work that is proceeding during the closure. And it's the action shots show that work is proceeding and even accelerating. And as Mr. McCracken stated, we have two bids on the agenda tonight for your approval. And we anticipate bringing forth seven at the next board meeting for approval. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you both to, uh... Um, Mr. McCracken and to uh, Ms. Robinson. Um, I'm excited and, and excited to be able to share the uh, updates on the bond uh, projects. We know that, that we had some interruptions there, um, but I'm excited that things are moving forward and board members um, looking forward to being able to share even more pictures of the, <laughs> uh, of the things that are happening in the, um, the, the forward movement. Um, any questions for either of the team members with regard to our bond uh, projects? No, I'd just like to thank uh, Mr. McCracken and his team, uh, Sandra, for the hard work. Uh, it, it, was, it all developed so quickly, and y'all certainly just stepped up and led us through, and you've kept all of the commitments that the board made to our community regarding transparency and engagement. So I just want to, on behalf of the board to thank you and your team so much for this good work. Thank you. Yes, the web that, updates uh, are, Go ahead, Ed. I was just gonna say the web updates look great. Um, it was great to jump on the site and just see the catalog of all of these wonderful presentations. So thanks to the team for putting them together and for making them available to the public. Thank you. And I'm sure our students are going to be so excited to um, <laughs> see all of these improvements yes. uh, when they come back to school. So it's an extra bonus for them. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Um, we obviously, you know, we, we made some commitments to the community and our scholars and families and, and all, but uh, at the end of it all, the, the point is to ensure that the environment is such young people's can young people can learn and and really thrive uh, in our schools and so uh, it feels good to be delivering on that seeing that that movement happen um so uh thank you again uh to mr mccracken uh again excited with the movement there and excited to share more over time board members question for you and and for others out there who are listening have you seen the many lessons uh, that our team has been producing? Many lessons on, um, the, I saw one the other, I watched one the other day on volume, calculating volume. I watched one, um, I think it was the same day or some other day um, where um, uh, young people were being taught some uh, tools for deepening their understanding of vocabulary and another was, on identifying the theme of a lesson or a story. I'm highlighting this because in addition to all of the materials that we've amassed on our website, in addition to all of the work that our amazing teachers and, and um, educators in general are doing to connect with young people, um, our team has been really creative with identifying some key skills and concepts that young people could learn and that they don't have to necessarily be on a Zoom call or uh, WebEx or, or Google Classroom. So if you haven't seen them on our Facebook channel, um, uh, YouTube, they might uh, be on our Comcast channel as well, but I know Facebook and YouTube, please check those out. Uh, these mini lessons are about five to seven minutes or so long, um, and they're, they're really, really cool. Uh, and so for, for parents who are, who are now looking for that next step in their uh, instructional strategies at home, 
um, if you want to identify some of those um, some of those mini lessons, but I definitely encourage you to utilize those and have young people to watch and, and then talk to you about what they've learned on those mini lessons. Uh, I promise you it will enhance your teaching strategies, parents. So, and again, a, a huge kudos and, and a shout out to our instructional uh, team, our teaching and learning team for uh, the work that they've done there. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about meal distribution and um, the work that Partners in Education and all of our general par our partners um, external to JPS have been doing. Partners in Education has received a total of $78,076 in actual donations and or pledges to provide a total of 33 distributions of weekly dinner meals. Nearly 14,000 meals have been distributed to date. And these distributions um, are planned through May 21st, which is the last Thursday or, or um, towards the end of our school year. Um, the plans for our summer feeding are, are still in process. I wanted to share this information about, because we're really, really proud and excited about the work that our team has been doing, as well as um, all of those who have locked arms with us to support our families during these tough times. Foot, um, Footprint Farms, um, we've received a total of $38,000 in actual donations and pledges to provide a total of 23 weekly distributions of fresh produce. An additional $3,400 uh, is being uh, raised to, to continue these uh, uh, this distribution of fresh, fresh produce. Uh, these uh, distributions will also um, are slated to end uh, May 21st, uh, which is the end of our school year or the last Thursday in our school year. And so again, we want to celebrate and thank so, so much Footprint Farms uh, for their support of our young people and families. Uh, in addition to the food distribution, um, Atmos, Energy uh, donated $9,200 to provide weekend food backpacks uh, and packages, uh, which, were which were distributed for two weeks uh, in our district. We also partnered with the Mississippi Food Network to distribute 400 family food boxes that were valued around $7,200. These contributions um, were included in the, the total amount listed uh, earlier, but I wanted to call those out because um, such a large donation that we provided uh, to support our family. In addition to all of the food donations and the dollars to support the food, food donations, um, we also had several of our community partners to step up and support us with in-kind donations um, in helping us to get the um, the uh, learning at home packet uh, printed and, and out to family. Those partners include Adams and Reese, Baker and Donaldson, Butler Snow, Cannon Solutions, our uh, Parents for Public Schools, Phelps Dunbar, and Representative Deborah Gibbs and Sir Speedy uh, Printing. We're very, very honored to have them uh, partnering with us. Their, their support and in-kind donations uh, totaled uh, more than 22, I'm sorry, $24,000 in support to our district. And finally, uh, as we're talking about the, the uh, level of support and the kinds of support that we've received from our various partners over the uh, past month or so, the Get to College Center has donated yard signs uh, for each of our JPS uh, 2020 graduates. A total of 1,511 signs uh, were uh, designed and printed um, with a value of $9,000. Um, and we, um, we're, we're really excited to be partnering with them to because we know that our seniors have a very different uh, experience um, this year as they're graduating. And we wanted to make sure that we're doing all we can to, to celebrate them and to uh, just shout them out and let them know that we love them. 
Uh, so we want to again thank you, uh, thank the Get to College Center for their work there. As you can see, board members, and again to all of the community members who are paying attention this evening, uh, many folks, individuals, organizations, businesses, um, or some of our public officials have reached out to us, us and have um, raised their hands to say that they can help and they um, leaned in with their resources. And so we're just so, so thankful. I, I can't say enough about the outpouring of, of support that we've received. I uh, wanna thank, as always, uh, Thea Faulkner, who heads our, our Partners in Education effort. Um, and again, I give a huge, huge thank you to all of our partners. And um, just two more things, uh, board members, that I wanted to highlight this evening. Um, our, to our seniors, to our graduating seniors, I know that they've been uh, waiting patiently and sometimes not so patiently, but, uh, but that they've been waiting for information about our graduation festivity. Um, our assistant superintendent, uh, Mrs. Uh, Marshall Thomas, will come uh, shortly and share more about the um, the information that we have um, and the plans that are are developing around uh, graduation. So you won't have to wait any longer than tonight. We'll, we'll be able to share that information. Lastly, <clears throat> um, some of you know uh, I've shared with that I serve on the mayor's um, uh, COVID nineteen response uh, task force. And one of the things that the task force, um, this is a group of, of several uh, officials from around the, uh, the city and um, health officials and um, business leaders and uh, folks in higher education and, and uh, several other areas of um, uh, functional area. Uh, one of the things that has come of, the, uh, of that work is just the, the acknowledgement uh, of the the myriad of, of challenges that our uh, Jackson residents are dealing with, um, and and one around our mental health. The outbreak of the coronavirus, uh, COVID nineteen, um, is stressful uh, for for all of us. And fear and anxiety about a disease can be overwhelming and cause strong emotions in adults and children. To support the, the uh, residents of the city of Jackson, Mayor Lumumba has established the Mental Health Warm Line. The Warm Line is staffed with licensed clinical social workers who will assess mental health concerns of callers and connect them with mental health providers. The Warm Line is open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. If anyone is experiencing symptoms of depression or anxiety or just need someone to talk to, they can uh, call the warm line at 601-586-3073. That's again, 601-586-3073 or toll free at 1-866-300. 7948-866-300-7948. You can call that line and we'll have that posted on our website as well. Um, the warm line will continue to operate beyond the COVID-19 pandemic to address the mental health needs of our community. Um, and also, if you know anyone who's listening, if you know of someone uh, needing help, please don't hesitate to contact the warm line. Remember, we're not alone. Uh, we are in this together and together we'll get through it. And so we wanted to make sure that that resource was known to, uh, to our JPS community uh, because the, the issues are far beyond the, um, <clears throat> the inconveniences that we experience day in and day out and uh, the, the very serious economic stressors uh, that so many of us are, are dealing with. Um, the the health um, mental health needs are very real, and we want to make sure that that the resource is out there. At this time, uh, board members, that concludes my remarks. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take those, and if not, turn the meeting back over to the capable hands of President John. Uh, 
Um, board members, are there any comments on the superintendent's report? I would just like to um, echo the kudos for the team and um, partners in education at Thea Faulkner and all the good work that is happening to support our children. Thank you all for stepping up to the plate and, and working to not just support our kids with instructions, but to uh, support them with the essential services they'd normally give if they were actually able to be in our schools. So thank you. It is really wonderful to see the community come together to support our kids and families. Any other comments, board members? All right, next on our agenda, normally we have um, public participation. Um, we have no one signed up for public participation. I do want to let members of the public know that you can participate in um, public comment, even though the meetings are virtual. Um, you can email roswilliams at jackson.k.12.ms.us between 5 p.m. and 5.15. Um, to get in line for public comment. There's also a number on our website for you to call if you would like to participate. Also board members, um, the second meeting of the month, we have decided that um, we're going to reserve a small amount of time for board member reports. So if you are representing the board in any official capacity or if you chair um, any of the board meetings, and have a report that you would like to present um, to the public and to um, your fellow board members, please be prepared to do that on the, at the second meeting um, of the month. Next, we have information only items. Dr. Jackson. Uh, good evening, uh, President Johnson and to the other members of the Board of Trustees to Dr. Green, good evening. Um, we are recommending the administration of the Jackson Public Schools a Career Development Center is recommending a review and approval of the district's federally required local plan update for fiscal year 21. This is our budget uh, for our programs for the upcoming school year. These are the funds that will help support the fiscal needs of career and technical education that is managed to the Jackson Public Schools Career Development Center. Um, this budget is in alignment with our district's core values, as well as the state and national goals of preparing uh, all of our students to be college and career ready. We're working in collaboration with building and district staff, business and industry, and the community, post-secondary institutions, in a safe, caring, engaging, and healthy learning environment to create opportunities for student success. This initial budget plan is based on our award notification from the state of estimated funds in the amount of $1 $776,652.09. Upon receiving our award notification of actual funds, when the fiscal, the new fiscal year begins July 1, 2020, we will do a budget revision to reflect the actual funds. So to, uh, give you some insight into the estimated funds and where they came from. Um, if someone would please put up the um, federal budget summary. Dr. Jackson, we asked the board members to, to just reflect those pages. Um, so if they can go to page 12 of this report. Okay, so our um, estimated funds, 
notification in the amount of $1,776,652.09 comes from our federal Perkins funds of $431,987.29. We have state funds in the amount of $1,319,319,000 $655.80. And we also uh, have an estimated amount of state funds for adult education for $25,000 for a total of the $1,776,652.09. Um, we're also asking for approval of two new courses. Uh, the first course is work-based learning. This new course is required uh, under the new Perkins 5 Act. And what the course would look like in the district, and it, it has just really been renamed. It was co-op at one time. It was career pathway experience. And what the course does is prepare students for the world of work. They participate in sustained interactions with business and industry professionals. They get to participate in real uh, workplace settings, or we can create a simulated work environment to provide an opportunity for students to see what the work is like before they actually uh, go into it. It provides an opportunity for them to change their minds and get on a different career path if uh, they don't like what they thought they were initially interested in. Okay, the other course, the Health and Clinical Sciences course, prepare students for courses or for careers in, in the healthcare field. And according to the Department of Labor, um, healthcare it will be one of the fastest growing career areas of between now and 2024. And we can see with everything that's going on now with COVID-19, with the coronavirus, there is a great demand for healthcare professionals. Okay, are there any questions? Yes, Dr. Jackson, could you explain if I'm a student and I enroll in the healthcare course, what does that look like for me? Okay, what that will look like, you will get um, classroom instruction, of course, and you will have an opportunity to participate in clinicals. Uh, with this course, you will have an opportunity to see possibly every aspect of healthcare. Uh, usually, if you would ask a student um, what, is, what is healthcare or what would they like to do in healthcare, I'd like to be a nurse or I'd like to be a doctor. But with this, the focus is on all aspects. With nutrition, geriatrics and gerontology uh, is a big area now because people are living longer. So, and we can, again, there are so many implications with this uh, COVID-19. We see what's happening in the uh, long-term care facilities. So uh, certainly there are implications there for opportunities or careers for our students in uh, the healthcare area of geriatrics and ger gerontology, uh, taking care of the aged, um, mental health, uh, opportunities, they will have an opportunity to visit and actually see what goes on uh, in these uh, healthcare facilities. And pharmacology, pharmacy, uh, with Jackson and Mississippi being a healthcare destination, uh, students will have exposure to every aspect of healthcare and to make a decision based on uh, their experiences. That's very helpful, thank you. You're welcome. And also, we want to start uh, providing, which we already do, a pipeline 
to help the meet the needs of this of this area. So what better way? And with UMMC being uh, the largest uh, employer in the state, we have so many resources right here in our in our back door, really in our neighborhoods, to provide opportunities for our students. And this is Jean Hairston. I just want to uh, affirm so many things that you shared about the possibilities through this program and partnership, and, and particularly lift up how important that facility is for Ward 5 and for the greater you know, city of Jackson as well. But it's a wonderful facility, well appointed, lots of room, and I'm glad to see that we're able to expand its use in this manner. Okay, thank you so much for that. And uh, if I may add to, in the process of deciding on these courses, under Perkins 5, we were required to do a comprehensive needs assessment with uh, community colleges, business and industry, and other schools in our surrounding area. And we used labor market data from Mississippi, the most recent labor market data. So our course selections and the things that we're doing in this plan are not arbitrary. They are based on uh, factual information, labor market data. And if I may expand a little bit on the uh, work-based learning too, uh, in the executive summary, I mentioned that we are an advanced manufacturing state as well. Um, we have Continental Tire, uh, right there in Clinton. We've been uh, working with Nissan for many years with our STEP program, our Student Technology Exchange Program. Uh, we also have General Electric, Toyota. On the coast, um, you have Ingalls, all the shipbuilding and everything. And if we can't take students to those places, uh, they have personnel that will come and work with our students with these programs. So there are so many opportunities and we can go all over the state again. And uh, if you wanna go north, uh, right there in Batesville and, and, and I'm sure the business is booming right now in the midst of this uh, COVID, there's a, I think it's Batesville or a casket company. You can just go on and on and on. They're just manufacturing, advanced manufacturing that requires some engineering and input from information technology. So it's not just production that these students learn. They learn how to uh, use innovative problem solving skills and, and they're required. We have established a relationship with uh, Continental Tire and we are testing our students um, on work keys and many of them have scored silver or bronze they've done a little bit better but they're going to need some advanced skills to be able to do these jobs so we're hoping to provide that opportunity for them and you are that's that's i'm sorry go ahead miss hillier uh that's jackson are yes, internships available for them for the students who are involved in this program uh, yes, ma'am. We've been doing some uh, internship, job shadowing, and work-based learning. Mm -hmm. uh, years. We have a career pathway specialist um, that works with business and industry uh, to place our students in many of our programs to provide some, some uh, internships and work opportunities, both paid and unpaid. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> And, and you are also just to add that um, the profile of a JPS graduate talks about our students having opportunities to complete rigorous coursework. Oftentimes, when we think about rigorous coursework, we only think about AP courses, IB courses, um, college, um, and our dual credit courses. But the state also recognizes students who receive in industry credentials as um, an accelerated model. So we're pushing our students also that are not necessarily um, taking the AP courses that if they receive these industry certifications, that these are also considered to be accelerated um, courses in the state and nationally that, that's recognized. Um, with the new career and tech diploma in, endorsement that students will receive, 
um, not for the 2021 school year, but for the 21-22 school year, the students will have opportunity to receive this career and technical diploma endorsement where um, if they complete the two years of, of career coursework, they will have that particular endorsement that will allow them to go directly into workforce. It will allow them to gain admissions into certain career and tech programs. So um, it, it's built right into our profile of a JP, JPS graduate as well. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jackson and um, Dr. Jackson and um, Ms. Marshall Thomas, it seems like this program is um, well worth the funds in terms of being able to um, help our kids get into employment and help them get trained. Um, thank you for all the uh, um, additional questions. Board members, are there any questions or comments? All right, if nothing else, we will move on to information action items. Dr. Merritt and Ms. Miller, Adam um, A. All right, great evening to um, President Justin and Board of Trustees and to Dr. Green. We have before you the approval of the 2019 2020 board, board order for the Office of Federal Programs, which entails the various title budgets. And just to give you a little overview of the various title budgets, um, there are several, seven different programs uh, that we fund through the Office of Federal Programs. Three fall under Title I. One is the largest allocation, which is given to schools, which is basically the, um, the general Title I all allocation that is to improve uh, proficiency on the state standards and ELA, English Language Arts, and Math. Additionally, under there is Title I Part D, which is for neglected students, which a small allocation uh, goes to Henley Young, and those are the group of students that we serve with the Title I Part D allocation. Additionally, um, we have the cost pool in there, and that is the personnel that administers uh, the program, each of the title programs in, in our district, all uh, individuals that work uh, or personnel that works in the Office of Federal Programs. We work across programs, so we do do a consolidated cost pool. Uh, I always want to note that the district is allowed to do a 20% set aside of the total allocation, and uh, roughly we do a 12% 12 12 set aside to for the uh, cost pool and the administration of the program. Then there's Title II, which is responsible for um, teacher and, and administrative professional development. Then we have two title programs that are focused on special populations. They are Title III, which is for English learners, and then we have the um, McKinley-Vento uh, program. Uh, lastly, we have Title IV, which is the student support and academic enrichment. And under the Title IV program, we have three components, which consist of well-rounded education, uh, safe and orderly edu uh, areas and program areas that we can support, in addition to um, technology. And so I do present to you the, um, the budget for the 2019-2020 school year, the board order, pardon me. Thank you, Dr. Merritt. Board members, are there any questions or comments? If there are no questions and comments, is there a motion to approve action item A? I had just one uh, clarification question. Is it the 2020-21 budget or the 2019-2020? It's Thank the 2019-2020 board order. It's, it's, okay. it's for this fiscal year. It's for this fiscal year, yes. Sir. Okay, okay. But that's not what it is. That what it says on the agenda? That it is not. Okay. You need to make that correction on the agenda. With that correction made, I move for approval of item A. Real so, quick, real quick. So, um, Attorney Kerner, does it matter that the 
agenda that we adopted has 2020, 2021, and that the item is for the current fiscal year. I think if the board action um, expressly indicates the correction of the agenda as part of the item, then that will cover you. So should we amend the agenda that we adopted? Mm, it I, sounds I, like all we have to do I, is in the motion. I okay. think she said it. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's okay. So is, okay. Could you repeat your motion, could, Dr. Harrison? I move that we approve item 8A, uh, various budgets, and let the record show on the agenda and in the motion for the fiscal year 2020, 2019, 2020. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Harrison has motioned and um, Mr. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? There being none, um, the motion is approved as amended. Okay, we have now Dr. Merritt again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the administration has recommended an amendment to the Bailey Education and Kirkland Group uh, contracts. Um, as indicated, um, of course, we had lead partners, and due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we had to of course, adjust the way that the services have been delivered. And so we are recommending that we amend the current contracts of job embedded professional development um, to where these services are offered virtually um, through, um, that they're offered virtually. So with that said, these um, Kirkland, which provides math support for the district and Bailey, which pro provides ELA support, they will facilitate uh, grade level content sessions for our, our teachers in the district. Also, we are suggesting that, uh, are recommending that we carry this con the contracts out to the end of the school year where schools will have the option or the district will have the option too, to um, do these uh, professional development sessions throughout the summer as well as in the fall if we do not use all of the days. Thank you, Dr. Merritt. Board members, are there any questions or comments? I have a question, Dr. Merritt. Yes, ma'am. I know uh, a couple of years ago, the board made a particular emphasis on always having data and uh, when we do our evaluations. And I know things are different right now. We're in the time of pandemic, but uh, I would hope that at some point in the future, we would get a report from your office and your colleagues regarding the work that these consultants have provided and the degree to which they met our expectations and what we can do better to support them as they might support us. Yes, ma'am, we have, um, we will provide a quantitative uh, survey where we will look at the third term benchmark data as well as a qualitative survey which will entail the uh, input from teachers uh, in terms of the support. So we will provide that for you and um, we're currently working on that now. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. And Dr. Merritt, is that going to be provided when the contract is up for renewal or if the contract is up for renewal? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Um, board members, is there a motion to approve um, information action item B? So moved. Second. Second. Dr. Sivak has moved, and I didn't get the second. I guess Ms. Hilliard. Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Now we have the consent agenda items finance. All of the consent agenda items finance have been reviewed by the board previously either brought before us as information only items or in other presentations. We've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any other questions? Ms. Johnson, um, we, Ms. Johnson, we did add um, a third action item regarding graduation. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I've got the wrong agenda. So let's. Uh, and who's reporting on that? You proceed, Mr. Vice President. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Marshall Thomas. Marshall Thomas. Okay. All right. Good, good evening, everyone, again. Um, the administration recommends the approval of the facilities agreement with Jackson State University. Due to COVID-19 pandemic and to adhere to social distancing guidelines and restrictions, the Jackson Public Schools um, had to revise its traditional commencement to meet these required guidelines and restrictions. The new graduation plan, which I will um, discuss with you shortly, requires the use of the Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium to conduct the ceremonial presentation of the class of 2020. As such, the administration is requesting approval of the facilities of agreement for the Mississippi Vet Veterans Memorial Stadium with Jackson State University from May 18th through 22, 2020, uh, with contingency dates of May 23rd and May 24th. And at this time, I'll um, go through the graduation plan with you and discuss the revision. And the, the objective is, is to provide an overview of the district's revi revised graduation plans for the class of 2020 due to COVID-19. During the week of, eight, of May 18th through the 22nd, um, all JPS high schools will participate in the recording of the ceremonial presentation of the class of 2020 and the awarding of diplomas at um, the Memorial Stadium. Parents are asked to drive to the stadium entrance and drop off area and only the graduate will exit the vehicle and enter the stage area. And we have 10 cars at a time in lineup. The graduate cannot or will not be the driver of the vehicle. Graduates will be scheduled by last names in groups of 40. They will receive color coded appointment cards in the mail and those should be placed in the dashboards of their cars in plain sight. This will allow us to manage the traffic and the flow of traffic as we are um, pulling our graduates um, 10 cars at a time and ensuring that we're adhering to the social distancing requirements. Cars transporting graduates will be lined up as they um, arrive during their specifically scheduled block of time. This is just, um, just a pictorial representation of the traffic flow that we will run um, where the cars would actually enter the stadium area from West Street and we'll circle around. Lot A is our um, entrance area in which the graduates will be dropped off. And we have a staging area that's in, actually in the end zone is where our stage will be set up. Students will um, enter from that area and we'll discuss that um, shortly. So I just wanted you to just have a um, pictorial representation of what the traffic flow will look like. In order to protect the safety and well-being of graduates, faculty, and staff, we ask that graduates that have been diagnosed with coronavirus, or if they exhibit any symptoms, symptoms that they, um, such as a high fever, that they not participate in this activity. Um, we have district nurses that will be on site to conduct uh, temperature screenings for all graduates prior to entering the stadium. Each graduate will be directed into um, to walk across the stage as their name is called to receive their diplomas. An official graduation picture will be taken as the graduate exits the stage. Graduates will receive their official diplomas as they exit the stage and stadium area. A free electronic copy of the picture will be sent to each graduate's JPS email address. Um, okay, the ceremony will be captured and produced into a formal JPS virtual graduation. And this will be presented on each school's scheduled graduation dates and time. Families are encouraged to have a graduation watch party as the, grad as the virtual graduation is broadcasted on the district's YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Comcast channel 19. Families are, though, strongly encouraged to follow the latest governmental requirements and guidance around um, social distancing and large gatherings. Graduates are asked to wear their cap and gown during the graduation watch party as Attorney Johnson, our board president, will confer their diplomas. Um, students will also be asked to turn their tassels and then there will be a, um, a tossing of the graduation caps. 
each graduate will receive um, five printed graduation programs and a video link of the virtual graduations will be posted on our district's website. And um, just um, um, to, uh, as a caveat, all only scholars who've met graduation requirements will be allowed to participate in um, graduation activities. In addition to the staging area, the field at the stadium will be outfitted with chairs, similar to our traditional graduation, and each chair will contain an individual portrait of each graduate and their personalized farewell message to their class. This arrangement will represent the formal presentation and unity of the class of 2020. Afterwards, the portraits that are actually displayed in the chairs will be displayed at each school as all of the graduates will be inducted into their school's class of 2020 Hall of Fame. Um, information um, has will be provided to all students on how to receive their um, to submit their messages and we've already started that as well. After exiting the stage, each graduate will take a unity photo standing in front of their simulated class. This is a um, just a simulation of what um, the portrait cards look like. It will be um, their graduation picture and this is their official message. Um, also on their, on their portrait card will be um, their current affiliations or organizations while um, at, in high school and also their future plans. This is the presentation. Um, this is a recording schedule and this will be included in, um, in the communication to the parents and the students. Also listing our contingency days. virtual graduation. These are their, our regular, um, our previously scheduled graduation dates. So we, we've adhered to and, and stuck with those dates and times. We know that um, some of our graduates had relatives coming in and, you know, we wanted to kind of stick with those dates to ensure that we did not change so much. Cap and gown pickup information. Um, we will start cap, cap and gown pickup May the week of May 12th through the 15th. And we have a plan for that. Um, students are scheduled to come in. We're 10 at a time. We're in the parking lots. We have um, everything kind of um, laid out so that we still will be able to adhere to um, all of the um, social distancing guidelines. The cost is $60. It includes their cap gown, their personalized stove and their medallion. This is the cap and gown pickup schedule, but they have individual uh, appointment times that are mailed with along with their letter. And those are already ready. Just waiting on approval. <laughs> and um, that is our graduation plan. Are there any questions? Before before taking questions from okay. the board, I just want to really underscore um, uh, the, the fact that um, one, I'm, I'm excited and hope others are um, with the plans and, and I think this will be really special for press conference and families. But also um, just want to underscore that the, um, the goal here is to stimulate the graduation as, and to greatly limit the numbers of young people who will even be in the stadium at the same time. As you heard, they'll be brought in um, in groups of 10. Folks will remain in their cars queued up to come up to the entrance for the stadium. So um, we've, we've uh, the team actually has thought a great deal about safety, um, even while stimulating this experience and creating something that I think will be really beautiful for the young people. Um, any questions or, or uh, reactions, comments from board members? It's Marcia Thomas. Yes, ma'am. Um, just want to commend you and your committee group that put all of this together. This is so very, very exciting and uh, I'm sure the students will be very pleased with this. Um, so just want to commend you all for such creativity. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> And as the parent of a 2020 graduate, I oh am, my goodness, <laughs> I am 
I'm, I'm really, really appreciative of how thoughtful you've been about their safety, but I am so glad that you thought about their experience as well. And she's been nagging me all week about what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I can finally tell her. So thank you so very, very much just to us and um, my family. Thank you. Oh, thank you all for supporting us. <laughs> and I too would like to commend you all for the creativity. This was, this is absolutely genius. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Mr. Figures. Any other comments, board members? I just have to say, when I first got hint of it without all the details, I said, what? <laughs> 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 but I think it's going to be really nice. Thank you for your leadership and, and everything that you do to make it happen for these young folks. Thank you all so much. Yeah, there's been lots of people in my ear about what we should do, and this beats all of them. So, congratulations. <laughs> yes, indeed. Just genius. <laughs> all right, board members, is there a motion to approve um, this item, action item? I so move. Second. Dr. Hilliard has moved. Mr. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Thank you so much. All right, board members. Now we are now we're moving on to the consent agenda finance. And um, as it's been said already, we've had an opportunity to review. Um, the items here. Are there any further questions? If there are no further questions, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items finance? So moved. Second. Dr. Sivak has moved, and I think it was Dr. Harrison that seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, the consent agenda items finance is approved. Now we have consent agenda items general. Um, again, all of the consent agenda items have been presented to the board previously. We've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any further questions? If not, board members, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items general? I so move. Second. Dr. Hilliard has moved and um, Ms. Hilliard moved and Dr. Luckett has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? There being none, the motion is approved. Now, board members, we have the consent agenda items personnel. All of the consent agenda items personnel also have been reviewed by the board previously. Um, we have had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any further questions? If not, board members, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items personnel? So moved. Second. Dr. Stevick has moved. Has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Any nays? There being none, um, the motion is approved. Also, board members, I want to bring to your attention that there was an error earlier. Um, I think when I listed the agenda, I listed the wrong date. Uh, the agenda that we were, the minutes that we were approved were for April 21st. Um, Attorney Turner, does, is there a need to have another vote or can we have this just adjusted? I think if there's an understanding among the board members that it was just a misstatement, as long as the minutes reflect what the correct action was intended by the board, then you're fine. All right, thank you. We understand. <laughs> is there a... Um, is there a need to hold an executive session? 
Not that I'm aware of. All right. If there's no need to hold an executive session, ugh, executive session, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Um, Dr. Harris has moved. Dr. Harrison has moved, and Ms. Hilliard has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? There being none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good